So in today's exciting installment of high school physics videos, we are going to look at waves on a string and how to do some calculations with those. And specifically we're looking at strings that are fixed on both ends. So imagine a guitar string or there's a number of stringed instruments, pianos, harps, whatever you want, uh, that will obey these similar properties. So to start out with, let's look at this little applet here. Um, I'm going to turn up the damping. So this is more realistic where there's going to be some friction in the string and it's going to die, die out. So if I pluck the string, it's going to bounce around for a while. And what this is showing here is the number of different standing waves or harmonics that are present. So right now we've got the first harmonic, we just lost the second. The higher harmonics take more energy, so they tend to die out sooner. Uh, when you play a musical instrument, the <clears throat> the frequency that you hear corresponds to the fundamental frequency or the first harmonic because that is the most pronounced um, wave that can be on that string. Um, so let me see if I crank it way to the side here. I'll get some ugly looking wave but I'll get higher harmonics. So I've got six harmonics here to start with and the sixth will die out then the fifth and fourth and so forth. Uh, if I lower the damping a little bit and I'm going to re-pluck my string. Now if I highlight this, you can see uh, that fundamental frequency is the main motion of this wave. The first harmonic is the second main motion. But basically this funky wave here is just adding up all of these different wave motions together. All right, now there are additional waves that don't last even as long as like this fifth and sixth harmonic when there's damping on. Those ones went away pretty quickly, right? Uh, if you actually pluck a wave in real life, there's all kinds of waves that just don't fit nice and evenly with a node at the ends of the strings. And so those ones die out almost immediately. They'll be reflected and usually those reflections are going to have destructive interference because it takes a nice a uniform sine wave uh, to interfere constructively. So those ones go away and it's only the waves that fit what we call the resonant frequencies that will uh, last for any significant amount of time and it's the fundamental that lasts the longest. Alright, let's look at some calculations now. Um, oh, one more little animation. So <clears throat> Here is the fundamental or the first harmonic again, and that wave is bouncing up and down. And a lot of times, if we're going to draw it, we draw it like this. We're not saying that the string is in both places at once, but we're just saying if you, uh, and I'll show you in class a little demo I've got of a, a little wave machine. Uh, it looks like this, like this little loop if it's going fast enough. And sometimes we use that terminology. We say there's a standing wave with three loops or a standing wave with four loops. And this is what we're talking about. With four loops, that would be the fourth harmonic. And a standing wave of two loops would be the second harmonic, and so forth. All right. So if we look at all of those waves at once, you pluck a string. This fundamental frequency is called the first harmonic. Oh, I guess I haven't gone over that, that terminology yet. OK, so this is the longest wave that you can fit on that string. Uh, and we call that, there's actually two schemes just to confuse everyone, I don't know why. Uh, this one we call the first harmonic, and then the next wave that fits nicely, where you get a full wavelength or half a wavelength um, on the end, is called the second harmonic, and then you can get one and a half wavelengths in there, and that would be the third harmonic. Now they have this other naming scheme, why they have two I don't know, and <clears throat> In the other naming scheme, this longest wavelength is called the fundamental. I'll use that term fairly frequently, the fundamental frequency. Uh, but then this second harmonic is called the first overtone. So it's like the main tone and then the first overtone. And this is called the second overtone. A little confusing. So usually when I'm doing the higher order frequencies, I'll call them harmonics. But I will sometimes call this the fundamental frequency. All right, now if we look at the math of... Uh, relating the length of the string to the wavelength and the frequencies that are produced by these waves. Well, this length here 
is even though it makes a whole loop, it's only half of a wavelength because this guy down here is a whole wavelength. <clears throat> so L equals half the wavelength. For this wave, L equals the wavelength. This one, obviously, it's three halves of the wavelength. And so if we <clears throat> kind of reverse that formula and solve for the wavelength in terms of L, we get this nice little formula here. Let me turn my pen on real quick. All right, we get this nice little formula here, 2L over N, and you can just plug in uh, any value of N, and in theory, you could have an infinite number of them as long as your string doesn't break or whatever. Uh, so if we plug in 1 for the first uh, harmonic, then you're going to have the <clears throat> wavelength equals 2 times the length of the string, which is what we get when we rearrange this. If we plug in 2 here for the second harmonic, then we get the wavelength equals the length. So this formula here will reproduce all of these equations here for any um, number of harmonic. Now we use our equation that we had before, V equals F lambda, and we rearrange that, so F equals V over lambda. Plug this in for lambda, and since it's in the denominator, it gets flipped, and so you end up with nV over 2L. So if we know the length and we know the speed of the <clears throat> wave on that string, this V here is the velocity of the wave, right, from our equation here, then we can calculate exactly what the frequencies are produced by a string of a given length. And since this uh, <clears throat> V over 2L, well, that's just the the frequency when n equals 1. So this is kind of a real nice way to think about it. Any of the higher order harmonics are just going to be multiples of the fundamental frequency or the first harmonic. So if we know that f1, we'll choose some nice round number, if it's 100 hertz, then we know that f2 has got to be 200 hertz and F3 has got to be 300 hertz, and so on. So the step size between any two successive uh, harmonics is always going to be equal to the fundamental pre frequency. All right, pretty straightforward. Uh, let's do a couple of examples now. Uh, I'm actually going to change my pen color. All right, so let's look at this. I have a string of length L, fundamental frequency I know is 400 hertz, and I want to know what is the fundamental frequency if the string is shortened. And usually if we're doing musical instruments, we're not like cutting the string and retying it, but this is what fingering on a guitar does. Or on a piano, you just play a different string, I guess. Uh, so we can just kind of think through this pretty quickly. If we say, well, the length is... Uh, multiplied by a factor of three-fourths, and our equation was F equals uh, NV over 2L. So the <clears throat> FN, I guess, the frequency is inversely proportional to the length. So if we multiplied the length by three-fourths, that means we take the frequency and multiply it by four-thirds. So 400 times, that's uh, not a four, let me erase. Da, 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 da. Come on. Oh, okay. Times four thirds, and that is going to give us 533 hertz. And if you've ever played a guitar, you know that when you finger the string, the, the sound gets higher frequency, corresponds to pitch. So higher frequency means a higher pitch. And we could work through the mathematical details <clears throat> if we wanted to. Uh, we're going to say the fundamental frequency was V over 2L. And then I'm going to say the new fundamental frequency. It's still the fundamental. It's just a shorter string. So I'm going to put a little prime here. Well, that was going to be V over 2 times 3 quarters L, right? Well, I can just factor out this, uh, this V over 2L part times the 3 quarters here, still in the denominator. The V over 2L was just F1 divided by 3 quarters. Bring that up, comes times 4 thirds. So the way we can kind of think through that still works here. All right, another example. If we know the third harmonic is 360 hertz and the fourth is 480 hertz, I want, then we could figure out what the fifth harmonic is going to be. So I mentioned earlier that the step size from any one 
uh, harmonic to the next <clears throat> adjacent harmonic is going to be equal to the fundamental frequency. So the fundamental frequency, or the first harmonic, is going to be 480 minus 360. So we've got a fundamental frequency of 120 hertz. If we want to know the fifth harmonic, all we have to do is take that fundamental frequency times the number of harmonic we're looking for. So 120, oops, 120 times 5. And the fifth harmonic is going to be 600 hertz. Another way we could have done it is once we, we would still have to find the fundamental either way, but then we could say, well, that's just going to be one step up from the fourth harmonic, so we could say 480 plus 120 would also give us 600 hertz. All right, last example. Let's say we have a string that is 0.8 meters long, 60 centimeters, vibrating at 480 hertz and produces a standing wave of three loops. So by three loops, we mean we've got one and a half wavelengths. If we want to draw in the other side, we get something like this on our string that is 0.6 meters long. Okay, and we want to know the wavelength of the standing wave. So we want to know this distance here, right? Because that's one wavelength. Now there's a few different equations we can get, but if we understand that uh, this picture here and what's going on, then we could say, well, the wavelength, these are equal size loops, so it's just going to be uh, 2 thirds times 0.6, and that will give us our correct answer. So we end up with 0.4 meters. Okay. Well, we could do this uh, using our other equations, right? We could say that lambda, this is the third harmonic, so you have to understand that the three loops means it's the third harmonic. And lambda equals 2L over N. Okay, we've got the 2, the length of the string we have, so times 0.6. And we've got the third harmonic, given by the information that there are three loops. Again, we've got 2 thirds times 0.6. So whether you like using the equations or just kind of thinking through what's going on, Either way, that'll work. All right, see you later.